Hello and welcome to this head-to-head -head Three Kingdoms Spotlight. I'm joined by Tom once again to have a look at some of the changes that we've made to multiplayer campaigns in Total War Three Kingdoms. Uh, we are playing as the two bandit characters. Yeah. So I'm playing as Zheng Jiang, and as you can see, Tom is playing as Zhang Yan. Uh, so we, we have got a nice start position next to each other, so we're quite yes. close. We've, we've actually got each other's capitals right next to uh, each other, which makes it pretty yeah. easy um, to, to set up your coalitions and trade routes mm -hmm. together. But these are two characters with very hard start positions. They are. So we're on turn um, 24 right now. So yeah. we've, we've played a little bit and we've had we've had some struggles, some turmoil. But as you can see, I've expanded quite far out here. And I can only, because we're not in any sort of alliance yet, I can only see this point to your trade yeah. to your trade route just here. Um, but should we talk about li a little bit how um, head heads have changed now? So obviously they're, they're a bit more dynamic. So previously where you'd pick, are you being co-op or are you playing against each other? Mm -hmm. um, now you just start. Yeah. And and it's you know it's just it's as I said much more dynamic. You use all the new diplomacy options that are in Three Kingdoms that that add you know add so much to the game, and you can use those to either we can form a coalition, or we can do other things like that. So let's we we at the moment just so people know we're swapping bes between screens. Yeah, we can tell if we're on wheels of screen because Zheng Zhang's just over there, and we're on my screen. There we go. And the nice thing um, as well is that we've got ourselves in different graphic settings as well. So yeah. I've, I've got the records mode um, post-processing on, and you've got the romance mode. Yeah. So you'll also get a little bit of a color difference as well. Yeah. So yeah, as you said, the main difference between the um, the sort of previous multiplayer campaigns that you might have played in other Total War games is the fact that, as you said, it's, it's fluid now. So there's no actual hard lock to cooperative. Mm -hmm. You're not forced to be in alliance with each other, but you're also not forced to kill each other. So if you open up the diplomacy options now, We've actually got a brand new one, which is to share the Mandate of Heaven. Yep. So if we'll we open you. up with Zheng Zhang, yeah. So we can go under our diplomatic treaties, and this is to pledge to share the Mandate and win together. So we make an unbreakable pledge, sharing the Mandate of Heaven to achieve a joint victory in cooperation. So this is kind of like a hard lock to uh, to setting yourself um, as in an alliance, essentially. Yep. And what that means is not only are you in an alliance, but your um, your actual count of how many settlements that you control mm -hmm. will actually pull together. Yes. So yep. once you hit that emperor rank, you can actually pull together, once you've gotten the three seats of power under one of your, or both of your control, you can then have all of your settlements pulling together into one number. And that means that you've got a larger empire together. Once you hit that win condition, you both win together. Yeah, definitely. Um, and then there's more informal stuff before you get to that late stage. Because that you could obviously use that right at the start mm -hmm. if you want to. But that's much more useful towards that kind of mid to late game place where you're, you're, you've kind of emperors have been declared. And you're like, well, where are we going? Where do we want to sit in this, yeah. in this place? Do we want to go against each other or do we want to have an alliance? Um, of course, before that, you can form coalitions. So I've now achieved high enough rank that we can form a coalition together. Um, shall we? Yeah, let's do it. Let's form a coalition. So I'm obviously going to propose this deal to you. And then, as you can expect, if we uh, fade over to my screen, I'm going to get that um, as an option for myself as well. And, of course, diplomacy works as you'd expect between both of your factions. You can set up your own deals. Um, we can trade ancillaries and all that kind mm -hmm. of thing. Um, we can give each other territory if we've maybe taken something over and it's actually part of another person's uh, commandery, for example. You could, um, for example, you've got Tai Yuran right next to you and uh, yep. I'm actually trying to get that last bit of territory. So if you were able to take that over, mm -hmm. you could gift that over and maybe I could give you something in return. And one of the nice things as well is that um, because that's such a maneuverable and flexible system, the new diplomacy overhaul, essentially, that we've done for Total War Three yeah. Kingdoms, means that you've got loads of cool new options that you wouldn't have been able to do in previous Total War games. Um, one of the more interesting ones that we highlighted was the fact that if you use your uh, marriage proposals, so let's say that you have a character in your faction that you don't mind getting rid of, um, one thing that you can do is load up that character's military, yeah. um, his retinue, with all of your unique units that only your faction can generate so we can we can literally we can do that right now actually Let's. so we can recruit um your special units perhaps your uh, black mountain outlaws which is something that i don't get access to yeah. and then we've um, also got the black mountain marauders which you exactly don't access yeah to, so we'll load a couple of those so they're gonna tank your income yeah. but it's fine because <laughs> yeah. you're sending them over my way but that means that once i accept that character into my faction through marriage i'll actually have those units yep. for myself and as long as i don't get rid of them they'll keep replenishing as well so i can actually we can sort of share each other's unique units, which is a really cool um, way of playing through it. Yeah, definitely. And also, obviously you can trade food as well. So you currently have a lack of food. So we can mm -hmm. trade something for that as well. And any items, we can just communicate between each other and trade those between us. Um, and of course, there's some sneaky things we can yes. do, Michael, as well. So with the new, uh, we're on my screen, aren't we? Yeah, with the new spy system, mm -hmm. um, I 
obviously this isn't working great because I'm sitting right next to you. Yeah. Obviously, um, you'd, you'd want to be yeah, a little yeah. bit more uh, sneaky about this if you were trying to do it to your friend. is because I've now used all my income. I uh, need to borrow 300 gold from you, Michael. I can give you 300 pounds. So, so I can spy on you. Uh, <laughs> so if I just request a payment yep. of... Uh, well, I'm just going to request 500. Oh, really? wow. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, yeah no, I'll send that over. Down. Just just for the sake of the video, Tom. Yes. For the sake yes. of the video. For the sake of the people. Um, and then if I go to spies, I can then hire this guy right here. Click on yourself and deploy a spy there. So next turn... Um, that spy will be in your faction, and it won't actually alert. It won't tell you when I'm doing stuff. So I'll mm -hmm. be doing things in here, and you know, reducing your movement range and messing with your armies. If you happen to hire that character, yeah, you know, it would just be triggering random events, which do happen anyway. So you know, you would be none the wiser. So I could be playing along the whole time, and we'd be in a coalition. <laughs> we're all happy and happy and joking around. It turns out I've got four or five spies in your army, and you know, 50% of your forces are actually. I know yeah. exactly what you're doing. Um, but of course, you can do the same to me. So Yeah, and that's um, one of the nice things about listening to the campaign is the fact that you don't have to continuously be locked to that one win condition. If you were to do a head-to-head -head in a previous game, yeah. you only win if you actually destroy the other person's faction. Uh, in this case, you know, we could actually put aside our differences halfway through and think, wow, we're getting completely annihilated whilst every other faction in the game is doing really well. Maybe we should just give up on this whole destroying each other thing yep. and actually just work together. Yep. And maybe once we get to a point where we're both quite strong and we feel quite confident, we can actually go up against each other again. But maybe I've been preparing that whole time because I've got about four spies in your faction yes, exactly, right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, and of course, as was mentioned in the um, the mid game the mid game spotlight that was that you uh, you go you and Pete did the other week. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, once you become an emperor, that does cancel alliances with you know with all the other people that declare themselves emperor. So if we were the two most powerful factions at the time, um, you know our alliance will be broken by the game so yeah. it forces us to e to, to reevaluate re exactly yeah. what we're doing yeah and can create some really interesting dynamics where you're just having to kind of put a lot of trust into that person yeah. and obviously your 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 friends are going to they're going to mess you up Michael. and that's another interesting thing as well is that you can find yourself in once again these strange positions that only happen in this game where for example maybe you've been playing second fiddle so you're playing for quite a bit they've got a huge empire and you've just been kind of like plodding along as their little mate um whilst they're basically you know taking the bulk of all the territory that means that they could end up in a position where they're super strong and they hit that emperor rank yeah. and they leave you behind suddenly you don't have a seat of power and it's the other two factions in the game that have actually taken that before you have so now you think to yourself well maybe i can actually just backdoor my so-called friend take his position of power off of him and i've got a free emperor yeah. seat no know? definitely so yeah. what i think we're gonna we're gonna skip ahead uh, a turn or two so that we can show a couple of the uh interactions yes. of the spies in my faction and uh yeah let's do that Okay, so a few turns ahead, I've regained some cash by selling off some ancillaries, yeah. and if we go into our court screen, what's this? A mysterious new vanguard has appeared, <laughs> uh, waiting employment. So if we grab uh, this boy right here, unbeknownst to me, a spy, of course, from Tom's faction, uh, and you can see that this guy is um, is also... You know, he's, he's not going to have any kind of yeah. um, notifying trait about him. So you, you can just be completely po-faced to your friends and say, yeah, that Vanguard looks pretty good. Maybe you need some cavalry in your faction, yeah. that kind of thing. Uh, and they can, unbeknownst to you, just join your faction. And suddenly, you know, they've got line of sight. They've got mm -hmm. a, um, information on what's going on in your faction. Yeah. Not only that, of course, at some point, I'm probably going to raise them in my armies as well. So if we go down here, Cheng Yongyong is available for hire. And all of a sudden... You've got your army abilities available to you as well. Yeah, definitely. So let's skip ahead another turn, um, and then we'll have a look at the abilities on the screen. And then, yeah. So next turn, and we go back over to Tom, and you can see that there he is in your undercover network, just been hired and also been made a general as well. So as you've seen in the other spy videos, um, for every sort of... Uh, sort of rank i guess of different actions yeah. that you can have available to you they're all linked to that person having a certain rank in my faction so for example if i were to actually adopt them at some yes, point yeah. or maybe even marry her uh jeng jang to chen gong ying then you would actually get access to those family tree abilities as well which are really really deadly yeah definitely and if you really wanted to infiltrate someone's family tree you could also like um 
during your discussion about the gameplay be like, oh, I'm really struggling to ho keep hold of this key character. Like, they're close, so close to defecting and just pretend they've defected. And then, obviously, your friend could, especially with Jing Zhang as well, with, the, with, that, with that initial marriage as well. Mm. Like, early on, you could be like, oh, no, I've just lost... I've just lost a key character. Like I can't believe I've, I was playing as Dong Zhuo and I've lost Lu Bu. I can't yeah. believe he's gone. You're of course gonna. You'll be like, oh, I'm just gonna steal Lu Bu. Like what a cool <laughs> character. Like you might just take to play along and take that. And um, and not even yeah. that. Like you might just be like, oh no, it's fine. He's appeared in my recruitment pool. Yeah. It must have been because I was right next to you. And then you're like, oh yeah, fantastic. Yeah, now you can hire him as yeah. your heir. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. all of a sudden, you've got all of these uh, great options. And maybe you can actually end up killing their faction leader with Lu Bu, which is pretty damn cool. Yeah, definitely. And that's why, you know, and and you you might get all the way to the end of the campaign before realizing. Yeah. You know, and you might it will just be like hours and hours of gameplay and you're just con constantly playing along hard keep hard secret to keep though Michael. yeah absolutely yeah um so yeah there's loads of new options um just from the fact that it is multiplayer campaign in three kingdoms this yeah. is the interesting thing is that the new systems that we've added because they they all work in multiplayer that means that you've got all of these new toys to play around with and they just have that extra bit of bite when you're doing them to your own personal friends as well definitely. So thanks very much for joining this head-to-head -head spotlight. Obviously, we've shown off some of the possibilities um, that you can you can take on with your friends. Yeah, but um, if you want to see us play a proper campaign, we're actually going to be playing one on next Thursday and next Friday yep. as part of our daily live stream. Yep. So, so it's going to be it's going to be really yeah. Really so fun. it's the 16th and 17th of May. Um, come join us on Twitch.tv slash Total Official, um, and we're going to be yeah yeah we'll be continuing this actual campaign, yep, which is going to be, be really interesting. So thanks very much for watching. Uh, we'll see you on the streams and uh, see you soon. Yeah.